I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week, and listen, God is going to do wonders this week in your life and through you. Praise God. Now, remember what the Lord told us at every broadcast, we must demand and receive our daily bread. So are you ready? Let's go say, Father, pray this prayer with me. Say, Father. I demand and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Believe it. You see, listen, you've got to believe every word that comes out of your mouth. That is the number one step to having answered prayers. You must believe every word coming out of your mouth. You remember Jesus spoke about faith. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. He says, have faith in God. From verse 22, he says, have faith in God. But verily I say unto you, if you have faith, even as a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move and be thou cast into the sea. Then there is something he said to her. And you believe that those things which you say will come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. And it's not about just speaking to the mountain. You must believe that the things that you say will come to pass. So that is the number one key to having answered prayers. So every time we make this declaration, every time we make this demand, you must believe that what is coming out of your mouth will come to pass. <laughs> and you will begin to have what you say. Thank you, Jesus. So are you ready for us to go into today's broadcast? Father, we bless you today. Oh, you're opening our eyes to your truth. Not just that we may see, but that we may walk in and manifest your truth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to John chapter 17. And I've told you this before. This to me, as to me, this is the holiest chapter of the Bible. <laughs> Praise God. So why do you say holiest? Yeah, because this is where Jesus was communicating with his father. Think about it. Verse 20, Jesus speaking, and remember he was praying to his father. He was praying to God. Now, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words. Now, this is where you come into the prayer of Jesus. He said, I'm not praying for these alone. Who are these that he was referring to? His disciples that were there with him that day or that time. He said, I'm not praying for these alone. I'm also praying for those who will believe on me through their words. Now, how did you come to the gospel? How did you come to believe in Jesus Christ? Through their words. Matthew spoke. Luke spoke. Mark spoke, John spoke, see? and then several other people, Paul spoke. All these people that have spoken to you. The preacher that preached that day, you spoke. You see, they all, the preacher learned from someone who learned from someone who learned from John, who learned from Matthew, who learned from Peter, who learned from you. You understand what I'm talking about? So he'll pray it for you. Now, what's the prayer point? He says, verse 21, that they all may be one. 
Now I know we take this scripture many times to pray the prayer of unity for the church. Oh, we must be one. Jesus prayed that they may be one. Hey, but Jesus wasn't talking about that kind of oneness in, in unity. Let's come together and let's, let's do things together. Let's stop fighting one another. That was not what Jesus was talking about. Look at it. He says that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now take this. It is important we come into the answer of this prayer that Jesus prayed because Jesus said the reason I'm praying this prayer that they may be one is that the world will know that God sent Jesus. So, so the request was about Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? The request was about Jesus. So our display of our oneness with him is what will prove to the world that God truly sent Jesus. There is something I always say when we talk about the blessing. You don't tell, you don't say a man is blessed until you see the third generation of that man. It is, now, you're going to understand this now. It is when you see the third generation of that man, when I mean third generation, the grandchildren of the man that you think was blessed. When you see the same blessing walking in the lives of the grandchildren, the same blessing that was walking in the man's life, you see it walking in the children and then you see it in the third generation. Now, that shows that that man was really blessed. People can walk with God, yet they are not blessed. Now, watch this. This is Jesus saying, say when the Bible says you shall see, we're talking about the blessed man now, that, that serves God faithfully. He say you shall see your children's children. It's not just about saying, oh, now I have children. And they gave birth. Oh, my, my, my children have given birth to their own children. Now my life, I have fulfilled the word of God that says I will see my children's children. <laughs> no, that's not the scene he's talking about. The scene he's referring to, you will see your fate at work in your children. You will see your fate at work in your children's children. Now, what, what do I mean faith? Oh, I'm praying. No, that's not what I'm talking about. The same way you saw God deal with you. The same way you saw God relate with you. You will see God relate with your children. And then you will see God relate with your children's children. That's, that's actually what that blessing is all about. So it's not just to reprocreate and have many generations after you. No, it's much more beyond that. That same thing. You, you, you think God has made promises to you. Wait until you begin to see what he will do with your children. And then wait until you see what he will do with your children's children. Praise God. That's why he spoke about Abraham. He says, for I know him that he will command his household and his children after him. That they will keep righteousness and judgment. So that I will bring to pass the things that I have spoken concerning Abraham. So you see. The things God has spoken concerning Abraham will require his children to walk in righteousness and to keep judgment so that God will fulfill his word that he spoke to Abraham. Now, let's bring it here. Jesus speaking here says, Father, I pray that they may be one as we are one. And then he says, so that the world will know that you have sent me. Actually, what Jesus is saying here is so that the world will know that you blessed me. Did you get that? So that the world will know. Now, Jesus, Jesus is gone to heaven. Are you following me? He's gone to heaven. But then, before he left, he was concerned that the world will know that you sent me. That's Jesus now. I want the world to know that you sent me. How is the world going to know that you sent me? When my children, are you following now? When my seed, in Isaiah 53 it says, when he makes his soul an offering for sin, you, he shall see his seed 
his seed shall prolong his days. You see that prolonging of his days. He says he will see his seed, his seed shall prolong his days. So he said God will see his promise on his children's children. Now that's the seed he was talking about now. Of course, Jesus not talking about physical children because he, he never had any physical child. Praise God. So he was talking about now. Remember Jesus said, except a corn of it falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. So he was looking at the life in Jesus Christ coming on the seed. Who is the seed now? The seed is all of us. See? Because we belong to Christ. The moment we came into Christ, the Bible said we are Abraham's seed. So Jesus was physically representing the seed of Abraham. But then the seed of Abraham was supposed to give back to another seed, which is Christ. So we belong now, every one of us that are in Christ, we belong to that Christ generation, which is the seed of Abraham. So Jesus standing here representing Abraham. And then he is concerned that now we are about to enter into the fullness of who we are as a blessed people, as a blessed lineage. Are you following me? So he is praying now that Lord, make them to be one the same way we are one then the world will know that you sent me watch this now it's not done yet verse 22 and the glory which thou has given me i have given them that they may be one as we are one and then he defines that oneness again i in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and has loved them as thou hast loved me. What a prayer. What a prayer. You, 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 you can't read this and you want to remain the same. Jesus praying to God, he says, look Lord, make them one. And he describes that oneness. It is, I told you, it is not about coming together in unity. You know, like, like, um, like you said in the book of Psalms, behold how precious it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That's not what he was talking about here. That's not what Jesus was referring to. The oneness he was referring to was not the gathering oneness, but the, the us in, see, he said it, I in them and thou in me. So, God is in Jesus and then Jesus is in us. What does that mean? God is in us. Jesus is in us. Praise God. That's what I say. I in them and thou in me that, we, that they may be made perfect in one. Meaning our lives will align to become the same with him. Our thoughts, our hearts, everything about us will become the same with him. We will reflect him. He says, when this happens, he says, that the world may know that thou hast sent me. And then he goes beyond. And thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Listen, brothers and sisters, God doesn't love Jesus any better than he loves you. This, this is what Jesus is saying here. God loves you the same way he loves Jesus. The same. He, he, you know, he, he, he doesn't prefer Jesus to you. I'm talking about you. God doesn't prefer Jesus to you. He loves you as much as he loves Jesus. Now you must understand this. Because we are talking about the, the, the seasons of manifestation. We are manifesting as sons of God. And that must take place. And God is positioning us aright in our own place, in our oneness. And the reason he's doing that is that we begin to manifest our oneness with him. So listen, if the world is going to know that God sent Jesus, and then Jesus desired that the world get to know that God loves us the same way God loves him then we've got to believe in this oneness. And not only believe, we've got to start walking 
in the reality of it. Because my time is up today. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now, don't miss any of this week's broadcast because it's, it's going to be loaded. It's going to be loaded. And if you've not subscribed on our YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. So you'll get the message in the moment it is posted and, and put on the notification button. So you'll be notified when the message come, it has been posted and you can watch it and listen to it firsthand. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.